So, uh, you need to apologize for something. Give me a second. Uh, so, guys, um, remember how I said that you guys focused on cruelty and um, you uh, had bad singing and were really, really emotionless and bland? Singing was true, but uh, yeah, you guys are get a pass for everything else. So this one's much worse than that. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Liam, and today I'm going to be talking about Gemini Holograms. It's directed by John M. Chu, Cho, and it stars Aubrey Peoples and Juliet Lewis. And it's an adaptation of the 1980 Gem and the Holograms cartoon. In this film, Aubrey Peoples plays Gem. And her family home is going to be taken away from them. And she needs money, so she makes a video of herself singing in a disguise, calling herself Jim, and she wants to delete the video, but her sister gets a hold of it and instead sends it across the internet, and it goes viral, and within one night, millions of people are talking about it. People love Jim, and this person, played by Juliette Lewis, comes and wants to make her a star with her industry for Starlight Studios. And Jem brings along her foster sisters and... Look, guys, I'm not gonna lie, this was painful to watch. During this film, they get this message. They go on the scavenger hunt to solve the mystery or find the hidden message that her dead father wanted to give her. I don't, look, let me just say right now, I never saw the gem cartoon before this movie, except for three episodes. I watched the first three episodes on Netflix so I could do a little homework because I felt like I don't know Gem and the Holograms enough to watch a movie that's based on it. I need to do some homework about it. I need to learn about the characters. I need to learn about the film. I need mean, to learn about the environment, the world, all that stuff. But apparently, that's not the case. Uh, nobody can do, or needs to do, any homework to watch this film. You can just watch it, because it will make just about as much sense that way. Um, and it will probably be a little bit less painful, uh, to be completely honest. It will be less painful for you if you don't watch the cartoon, so that you can you know, watch this. This is going to be a very short pros list. I'm going to tell you this right now. Just to get out of the way. The pros of this movie, the singing's decent. That's it. That that's everything. Everything is that that's it. Cons, acting's terrible. It's a generic movie. It's got nothing original to it, which is weird. It, this is focusing on source material that is very unique and very strange. I have never seen anything more strange in my entire life than the 1980s gem cartoon. It's unique. It was interesting. This is none of those things. It's generic. The characters in this movie are awful. There's nothing interesting about them. It's 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 awful. Every single character in this movie, I don't care about. Even Jem. Even Molly Ringwald, who is in this movie. I don't care about her. Why was she in this movie? Why? Juliette Lewis? Yeah, bad. It's just bad. Generic villain. There's nothing interesting. That's the problem with this movie, guys. There's nothing interesting in this film. And when I said the singing was good, that's fine. But the songs are generic as anything else. They're... There's a character in this movie named Rio. He is stale, flat, and boring. Just like everyone else. But this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. There's nothing interesting happening. There's nothing creative. This movie, the cinematography is awful. 
the editing's bad. But there's one thing about this movie that shocked me. And this is how I know it's a terrible adaptation. It's also a very offensive adaptation to people who like Jim. And I'm going to spoil something here. Don't watch this movie at all. Before this film was made, I did a little research on this. Before this film was made, the makers of the movie sent a message out to all the gem lovers out there. And there's a lot of there's a lot of people that love gem. They sent a message out saying, We want you guys to send in your videos about how you love gem. And what she means to you. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That's interesting. Maybe it's promotional stuff, but they use the videos in the movie. And they use those videos that complement Gem from the 80s to complement this Gem. Which has nothing to do with the Gem that they're talking about. It has nothing to do with the Gem that they love. And they use that to promote their movie. To make it look like, oh, this is fantastic. And to me, that is offensive. As a filmmaker, that's offensive. That's irresponsible to do that in an adaptation that is that is terrible to do to people who actually love the source material and it's inexcusable it's inexcusable for them to do that in the show there is a supercomputer called synergy and it's this huge thing with like five keyboards on each of its consoles and lights everywhere and a huge screen in this movie it's this big. And it's not a computer. It's like one of those like robot things with like those three claws, the black and white robots. You know that thing? It walks around like this. Except this one's on a wheel, so it's like going around like this. And it's like this big. That's a supercomputer, guys. Great job, filmmakers. You nailed that one. Here's something that my film studies teacher told me. When you're given a movie, try and take something out of it and see if the film still works. Sometimes it can be uh, for the better. Like, for me, if I took this singing out of Sweeney Todd, I think that movie would be a lot better in places. But in this movie, I did, said to myself, you know what, I'm going to take Gem and the Holograms out of it. Because the movie did that already. They took Gem and the Holograms out of it. They didn't care. So I took that out, and I realized this movie is not a good standalone film. It doesn't set up a world for us that's interesting or unique. And it doesn't tell a good story. If you didn't like Gem and the Holograms, or you didn't even know it, because I didn't even know it existed, if you didn't know it before you see this film, you will have no idea what's going on. You will have no idea what's happening, what the jokes are, what the references are. So it's just going to be weird for you. Bottom line, this movie's awful. It's insulting. It's unoriginal. It's... Bland, but the singing's decent. Yeah. I'm going to give Gem and the Holograms, as a film, a 0 0.5 out of 5. Because it's that bad. And I thought about it for a long time, trust me. I saw this twice. <laughs> and seeing it the second time made me feel even worse. It doesn't do anything to support it as a standalone film. It doesn't do anything to support it as an adaptation. It doesn't do anything to support it at all. There's nothing here. There's probably one time that I even laughed just because it was dumb. But not even. Just not even the thing that was happening. The movie. I'm just like, I'm actually watching this. <laughs> this is stupid. I yelled at the TV more than I ever have in my entire life. I don't like yelling at that thing. But I did. And I didn't like it. So, personally, this movie gets a 0 0.5 for me, too. So, Gem and the Holograms. Don't see it. At all. Watch the television show. Even though it's made for toys, it's actually pretty funny. Pretty interesting. And, you know what? Unique. I don't like Sweeney Todd from Tim Burton, but at least it was unique in its style. I don't know what this was trying to be. There was no vision here. No director vision. So, it's a bad movie. And I hate those. Well, guys, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I want to say. That's, that's it. I hate this movie so much.
What did you think about it if you saw it? Because if you did see it, I'm very sorry. Please let me know in the comments down below. Um, also, let me know what is the worst adaptation you've ever seen in your entire life. This is it for me. This is it. Uh, huh. Also, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And please, guys, as always, take care.